This week, I'm showcasing Yorkshire Force rhubarb. I'm serving that alongside a buttermilk panna cotta, a citrus almond crumble, and I'm going to show you exactly how to make this amazing dessert. Hey guys, Steph the Pastry Chef, welcome to the channel. I've got an amazing recipe today. It's Yorkshire Forced Rhubarb. For me, this is the finest export from Yorkshire and there's a lot of competition. Forced Rhubarb is actually rhubarb that's been dug up at the root in the field, brought inside to a big shed, and it's grown in the dark where it's given a supply of warm air, which allows it to grow, but there's no sunlight, there's no photosynthesis, so it grows up quickly, producing tender, pink, amazing rhubarb. I'm going to show you how to simply poach that and serve it with this really lovely buttermilk panna cotta. I really want you to try this recipe out. It's simple to do, really tasty, so I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So we start by making the panna cotta, followed by the poached rhubarb, then the almond citrus crumble, and finally plating the dessert. So for the panna cotta, take 150 grams of milk, place that in a pan with the zest of one orange, one teaspoon of vanilla extract, place these together on a medium heat, Bring to the boil, stirring during the process to make sure it doesn't stick on the base of the pan. Once this comes up to the boil, switch off the heat, cling film the pan and set aside to infuse for five minutes. In the meantime, take three sheets of gelatine. If you buy the small gelatine sheets from supermarkets, use six. Place these into some ice water and again, set aside for five minutes. We then take 300 grams of double cream and we lightly whip it. This isn't to bring it to soft peaks, it's just to thicken it slightly and add a little bit of air to the panna cotta texture. Set that aside. From here, take your infusion of milk and orange, add 40 grams of caster sugar, and bring it back to the boil while stirring. Once this mixture is hot, remove from the heat, squeeze out all of the water from the gelatine. As you can see here, add to the hot liquid, mix well before passing through a sieve. Once you've passed this through the sieve, make sure you really squeeze out all of the liquid from that orange zest to extract as much flavor as possible. From here, take half of this hot liquid and mix it with 300 grams of buttermilk before pouring this mixture back into the remaining hot liquid. Pour this into the very lightly whipped double cream. Pour this into a jug. This is the consistency that you're looking for. It should still be liquid, but it's slightly thicker due to that whipped cream. I'm using these metal Dario molds and also these metal pudding dishes which you can pick up really cheaply. Either of those will work great. We grease those lightly with vegetable oil before distributing the mixture out between the different panna cottas. This recipe made seven panna cottas. So if you're happy with those, we can now place them into the fridge for four hours minimum to set. Moving on to the crumble, we take 50 grams of flaked almonds, chop those roughly, place them into a bowl and set them aside. In the bowl of a stand mixer, we take 110 grams of plain or all-purpose flour, 60 grams of ground almonds, 90 grams of caster sugar, quarter a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon baking powder, 90 grams of unsalted soft butter, and finally the zest of one orange. Place these together onto the stand mixer with the K-beater attachment. This would work equally well with a handheld mixer. Place this on a low speed. Mix together until you find a breadcrumb consistency of the dough. At this point, we're going to add those chopped flaked almonds. Mix briefly again until it's combined. And the dough should come together in your hand when you press it like this. From here, we're going to press this together, tip it out of the mixer and onto the surface and form it into this block of dough. Now to turn this into lovely crumble clusters, we're actually going to take a cooling rack and a baking tray, pass the dough through the cooling rack, pressing it so it's evenly distributed throughout the tray. You can see here these amazing little nuggets of crumble. From here, we can bake these crumble clusters in a fan-assisted preheated oven at 160 degrees Celsius, which is 320 degrees Fahrenheit, for around 15 to 20 minutes or until lightly golden brown, as you can see here. So, onto the star of this show, this amazing rhubarb. You should be able to pick this up from all good quality greengrocers while it's in season. So wash this thoroughly before using. Then I like to portion my rhubarb into these nice little diamond shapes, which will look great on the plate, but regular batons or little sticks of rhubarb will work exactly the same. Portion all of your rhubarb in this manner. Then we move on to making the stock syrup or poaching liquor that we're gonna cook our rhubarb in. To do this, we take 300 grams of caster sugar, 500 grams of water, place these together in a pan with the zest of one orange before bringing to the boil and boiling for two minutes. After this, turn down the heat, add the rhubarb, Cover with a piece of parchment paper which has been scrumpled up. Poke a little hole in the top of this and then the idea is to poach the rhubarb at a hot temperature but without it boiling for about 8-10 to 10 minutes or until the rhubarb is soft but still holding its shape so it should just give as you press it. When you're happy the rhubarb is cooked you can remove it from the hot syrup and leave it to cool down. 
From there, reboil the syrup before adding the remainder of the rhubarb and repeating the process, poaching it until it's perfectly cooked. Separately chill the poached rhubarb and the syrup in the fridge. Now that the crumble has cooled down to room temperature, you can see now you can grab these lovely nuggets or clusters of crumble which we're going to use to garnish the panna cotta. Select a few nice pieces, dust lightly with icing sugar and they're ready to go. Next up we're going to take the oranges that we've zested throughout the recipe and we're actually going to segment them and take out the suprems, trimming away the skin with a knife and then carefully making incisions to remove these lovely juicy segments. So we're now ready to plate the dessert. Dip the panna cotta into some freshly boiled water to release it from the mould. Invert this upside down into the bowl and it should come out nicely with a bit of encouragement. To that we're going to arrange around the panna cotta a lovely pink poached rhubarb. Nice and tender but still holding its shape, a lovely vibrant segments of orange. We'll then take some of our lovely rhubarb poaching liquor which has got all that flavour of the rhubarb in. We'll spoon that nicely around the dessert. We'll then take some carefully selected clusters of almond citrus crumble, final flourish of a few baby mint leaves. And you're now ready to enjoy this amazing buttermilk panna cotta with poached rhubarb. Enjoy! It's such a shame guys, you can't taste what I'm making here on the videos. I'd love to send it through the screen. But what you can do is go and get those ingredients and make the recipe and I'd love it if you had a go. Thanks guys for all the recipe requests you've sent in. I will be working my way through those. But seriously, go and find some rhubarb from your greengrocer. Thank you for joining me once again at Pastry Towers. Please hit that subscribe button, give me that like, comment in the description below. Have a great day, I'll see you next week for another fantastic recipe on Steph the Pastry Chef. See you then.